Ladies and gentlemen, hey hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Chances are if you're on Cold War right now, you're probably working on ranking up a bunch of different weapons to get all the attachments and the camo challenges unlocked. And like personally, I just want to make sure I have everything maxed out in time for the Warzone update. Uh, but at the same time, obviously you want to get the best class setups you can for any given weapon. And this year, that requires a lot of weapon leveling, right? Uh, but once you get that done, you can make some pretty spicy setups. And so today we're going over the best class setup for every single assault rifle currently in the game. So if you enjoy the video at any point, or if you want to see more videos like this for other weapon categories as well, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new around here, or if you're watching and you're not already subscribed, I guess we are trying to hit 669,000 subs before next year. So if you want to keep up with basically everything going on in COD on a near daily basis, this is the best place to be, so feel free to subscribe and maybe even turn on those post notifications. Also, right now, Code Immortal will actually get you 30% off your G Fuel order, so if you want to get a new tub, a shaker cup, a starter pack, or really anything else, now is a great time to do so. Plus, uh, they also make some great stocking stuffers as well. Anyways, when it comes to the assault rifles in Cold War, at least from my experience leveling them all so far, uh, this weapon class has some of the best weapons in the game available, and also one of the worst by a pretty big margin. But uh, going in order, first up we've got the XM4, which is kind of like your standard M4 assault rifle that we see in pretty much every single Call of Duty game. Uh, it is pretty basic, it's pretty straightforward, definitely a very easy weapon to use in terms of like recoil and mobility. Uh, it's very well balanced all across the board I would say. Uh, its damage is decent, medium range it's probably going to feel the best. Uh, close range, if you've got your sights up in time, you're probably going to be able to compete, no worries there. Then long range, it just comes down to really staying on target. So the ease of use is definitely up there. Now as far as the attachments go here, I've actually really been enjoying the Microflex LED lately. Uh, originally, I was on the Hawksmoor site whenever I was using an optic. Uh, by the way, just not a big fan of the XM4 sights, bit bulky for my liking. But yeah, the, uh, the Microflex LED is definitely a very clean option. Then I've got the reinforced heavy barrel. It seems like on a lot of the ARs, the third barrel really shines because typically it increases the range and then also the bullet velocity without really hurting the controls, so that's definitely a very nice benefit to have. Then I've got the Field Agent Foregrip for better control, the 40 round speed mag for some extra ammo, then also a faster reload time. Then finally, the Airborne Elastic Wrap for better mobility, better flinch resistance, then also the ability to drop shot if you need to. Now, for my secondary, uh, honestly, I'm still working on completing the launchers like the Thumper and the RPG for Dark Matter, but uh, if you really want the best secondary, the Gallo is probably your best option right now. And for this, I would recommend the Duckbill Choke for a wider spread, the Reinforced Heavy Barrel for a faster fire rate and extended range, the 5 milliwatt Laser for better accuracy, the 9 Round Tube because, uh, really, why not? Then finally, either No Stock or the Marathon Stock if you have that unlocked. Now, for the perks and equipment on all my setups, this is pretty much the exact same for almost every single weapon. Uh, also, so is the secondary for what it's worth. And here I've got the stim shot, the Semtex, and then also the field mic for the equipment. Then I use the perk greed wild card so I can pretty much just stack up on perks. And I like to run tack mask and flak jacket in perk one. Both are pretty crutch perks right now, so you pretty much just have to use them. Then in perk two, I've got quartermaster and scavenger. And finally in perk three, I've got ghost and ninja to round things out there. Now, moving on to the AK-47, I would truly say this is probably the best weapon in the game right now when it comes to just uh, overall balancing, I guess. Uh, you know, the M16 and the AUG are kind of ridiculous right now, but it has also been rumored that they're going to get nerfed pretty severely here soon, whereas the AK just feels like it's really well balanced. I mean, this thing hits like a truck, right? It's got the damage numbers for sure, but it's also not the fastest weapon in the world either, so you kind of have to play smart with your gunfights if you are a more aggressive player. Otherwise, you are just going to get picked off time and again because the enemies are going to be faster or they're going to have a, uh, a faster setup, rather. But anyways, uh, for the attachments here, I've got the Spetsnaz Compensator to start things off. Uh, this is going to help with the control quite a bit. Then I've got the VDV Reinforced Barrel for better range and bullet velocity, alongside the Spetsnaz Grip for even more control, the 40-round Speed Mag for the same reasons as before, and finally, the Gru Elastic Wrap for better mobility, flinch resistance, and the ability to drop shot yet again. And this is basically like a no recoil slash negative recoil AK setup. Uh, it is super easy to use in terms of control. This thing is an absolute beast. Now, next up, we've got the Krig 6, a weapon that I've actually seen quite a few pros scrimming with already. But personally, I just can't decide if this is a weapon worth running like every single game compared to, say, the AK, for instance. I will say I do enjoy this way more than the XM4, but like I said, 
I'm not really sure where I stand on it quite yet. However, it is a great weapon for a more aggressive playstyle. It definitely excels more in those close and medium range fights compared to long range where its damage kind of has a pretty severe drop off, at least I feel like. Then for the attachments here, I've got the Microflex LED once more, the 15 inch CMV mil spec barrel, which increases the damage. And I mainly use that just because the rest of the barrels on the Krig are very, very weird. A lot of them really aren't that helpful. Uh, then I've also got the Field Agent Foregrip on there once more. Uh, all the same reasons as before there. Same deal with the 40 round speed mag. Then finally, I've got the Airborne Elastic Wrap as well for all the same reasons as we talked about earlier. Then we've got the QBZ, the, uh, the second to last assault rifle currently available. And uh, to me, this and the Krig are actually very, very similar. They both feel like very rushed from the assault rifles. However, this one has a far, far worse ease of use in those long range fights. The recoil here is just really awkward. It sort of jolts around horizontally a bit when you're spraying. And like I said, it is very noticeable in those longer range gunfights. So for that reason, I may actually prefer the Krig a bit. However, up close, this thing is a great aggressive weapon for what it's worth. And here I'm running the Microflex LED once more, the reinforced heavy barrel yet again, the field agent foregrip, the 40 round speed mag, and finally the Jason Bourne elastic wrap. So uh, pretty much what I'm deeming the standard setup at this point. Then finally for the assault rifles, we've got the FFAR, which uh, yeah, I gotta say this thing is just straight up not good whatsoever. It was good. It definitely was very good at launch. And then it got that nerf with the first round of major weapon tuning. And ever since then, I've been avoiding it at pretty much all costs just because it just, it doesn't take people out easily. It makes you work for it with its lackluster range and damage. And also it's not so ideal recoil. So personally, I would recommend staying away from this. Unless of course you don't have it maxed out yet, or if you're going for dark matter, in which case, uh, good luck. It's going to be a rough one with this. Uh, but if you do want to use it for whatever reason, I would recommend running the Infantry Compensator for better control, the Reinforced Heavy Barrel, definitely the Field Agent Foregrip, uh, the Salvo 44 Round Fast Mag, then also Jason Bourne's Wrap as well. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, with all of that being said, those are effectively the best class setups for every single assault rifle we've currently got in Cold War, and that is going to wrap things up for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, or like I said earlier, if you guys want to see me do this for like the SMGs, the snipers, the LMGs, uh, so on and so forth, let me know by dropping a like on this video. And of course, if you're new here, uh, if you want to stay up to date with pretty much everything going on in COD, from news to intel to updates to setups, and pretty much everything else in between, this is the place to be. So feel free to subscribe and maybe even turn on those post notifications. As I mentioned earlier, right now Code Immortal is actually 30% off on G Fuel. So if you want to grab anything there, be it a new tub, a starter pack, a shaker cup, uh, anything like that, Code Immortal has got you covered just in time for the holidays. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.